The base patch option is under the contact tab of the process settings. It is in the contact tab because base patch is a base and mobility correction tool. When activated, mutation surveyor will calculate the average spacing for entire sample and then use the result to correct for the mobility shift error. It will also look at end calls in the sample and apply a wavelet algorithm to make a base call correction. By correcting for mobility shift and base call issues, it is possible to allow for better alignment and mutation detection in some samples. This is particularly useful when you are trying to analyze mutation calls made at the beginning of the traces, where there are many mobility and base call problems. In this example, the analysis to the left is run without activating base patch, and analysis to the right is run with base patch. The first difference I want to note is that the end base calls on the left side. With base patch on, three out of the four end base calls were recalled as their respective nucleotides. These base call correction allow the software to align the sample trace better and extend the comparison region for more mutation detection. The blue bar shown in the electropharogram marks the beginning and end of the comparison region, a region in which there is sufficient data to call mutations. As you can see, the mutation call made in the analysis with base patch, which is missed in analysis without base patch, because it appears before the comparison region, has a high confidence score despite the fact that it is only called in one direction. The A to C mutation is not called because it is at the exact starting position of the comparison region, so it is not included in the mutation detection. With that being said, we will move on to 1D and 2D analysis parameters. You can change the parameters of mutation surveyor to optimize for analysis of one direction or two directional data. In the two directions tab, the default is set to two directional parameters. If you are analyzing one directional data, either forward or reverse strands only, then these parameters might be too stringent for the analysis and can filter out many mutation. Make sure you select one directional parameters when analyzing only one directional data. If you have a mixture of 1D and 2D data, then there are information that you should know. When analyzing 1D data under 2D parameters, the sum score is reduced by dividing the set number by the square root of 2. If this number is still too stringent, then there are a couple options you can take to analyze the data more efficiently. The first option is to separate the files into 1D and 2D groups and then analyze each set with the appropriate settings. The second option is to lower the threshold set in the 2D parameters in hopes of calling all the mutations in your 1D samples. Again, the threshold can be lower for increased sensitivity, but you could pick up more false positives in your samples. The settings for a particular data set may vary for optimal mutation calls. The third option is to analyze both 1D and 2D data under one directional parameters. With this option, you are more confident that no mutation will be missed in your 1D samples. This option, however, may introduce false positive into your project due to the high sensitivity. Another option would be to switch back and forth between 1D and 2D parameters when reviewing each individual mutation. We will talk about that next. This first example is a missed mutation call due to the parameters being too stringent. As you can observe in the mutation electropharogram and sample pane, the peak and red bar on top of the nucleotide position indicate that there is a possible mutation here that is not being called because it did not pass all the thresholds. However, we can switch to 1D settings by clicking the icon shown here. This icon will switch the analysis parameters from 1D settings to 2D settings or vice versa. The mutation is now called because the parameters are less stringent and it is able to pass all the thresholds. You can therefore review the mutation and judge for yourself whether this is real or not. One thing to mention again is that the 2D settings is divided by the square root of 2 when it is applied to the one directional mutation. So technically, if this mutation had a score higher than the sum score divided by the square root of 2 and passed all other threshold, it will be called. However, if you feel that these parameters are still too stringent, you can change them in the settings. This data set contains 2D samples, but one of the samples did not align correctly due to the quality of the sample. It is flagged as low confidence in the mutation table with red font because it is only called in one direction, but is subjected to two directional parameters. You can switch to 1D parameters at any time by clicking on the icon shown here. The software will now apply one directional parameters to the mutation call. As you can see now, 
The variation text is now color coded blue for high confidence. You can then confirm this mutation and add a comment to let yourself know that this mutation is called with high confidence under 1D settings. You can switch between the settings when you are looking at 2D samples in your project by clicking on the same icon. Mutation Survey has options to analyze sequences that have undergone bisulfite treatment to detect methylation. There are a few requirements that must be met in order to complete a methylation analysis. The first requirement is the need for a reverse complement of the sequence or gene of interest as the reference. The second requirement is the selection of methylation under the Others tab in the process settings. You can either set your own methylation or select all the methylation. Once you have completed these two requirements, the analysis can begin. This is a view of the main GAD after the analysis has been completed. Mutation Surveyor reads all uracil that were converted from the unmethylated cytosine as T's. So in this window, the horizontal blue bar on top of the T nucleotides indicate that they were originally a cytosine. At this position, you can observe that there is only partial conversion of the cytosine to uracil. These mutations are not in the CPG island and is called as regular mutation because the amplicon cytosines were converted to uracil and read as thymine in mutation surveyor. Therefore, these positions are called as mutation because they are different from the reference sequence. You can see all the methylated and methylated site by activating the methylation report under report tab. The methylation report can be accessed by going to the report tab and selecting customer report. A group of report will appear. Select methylation report to bring up the report table. Each individual sample amplicons are displayed in the first row. The position and nucleotides are displayed on the left hand column. The report will have four letter indication for two type of variation. The first type are cytosines on CPG island. M indicate that they are methylated and U indicate that they are unmethylated. For cytosine outside of the CPG island, S mean that they have successfully converted from cytosine to uracil and I stand for incomplete conversion. You can double click on any of the cells and the main analysis window will take you to the position of interest. To review, we discussed the two methods to import data into mutation surveyor. Then, we went to the settings to help the software group samples into appropriate context. After the context settings, we discussed the mutation parameters and how they could affect the mutation calls, including somatic and low frequency variants. If you are analyzing hypervariable sequences, the options under mutation tab of the process settings can eliminate some of the problems associated with hypervariable sequences. You can also use base patch when analyzing hypervariable sequences to correct for base call and mobility shift error. When using 1D and 2D data, we will discuss the different parameters that you should take into account when reviewing the mutation calls. And the final thing we talked about was methylation and the settings that must be selected in order for the analysis to be completed. This concludes Soft Genetics webinar on optimizing analysis settings with Mutation Surveyor. If you would like more information or want to try a free 30-day trial, please visit www.softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. You may also request for online training if you are interested in learning more about the software and its capabilities. Thank you for joining me in this webinar.